How's it going everyone? This is MimeLang. Welcome back to my channel where today I want to provide you guys with 5 great cooling tips to keep your laptop's temperatures for both CPU and GPU under control. And kicking it off with number 5. The most basic, underlooked and free tip I can give you with immediate results is lift your laptop off the table. This is a very simple thing to do and benefits especially laptops with their intake ports on the underside but helps all laptops nonetheless. You can use a book, you can use anything improvised, anything goes really, just make sure not to block the intakes in the process. Number 4. Invest in a cooling pad. I'll start by saying that I'm not a big fan of cooling pads, but I will admit that there are some models on the market which do a good job. Prices here range from $20 to $100 for the top dogs. I suggest getting something with large fans as they displace more air and are quieter. There's all sorts of nifty features on some cooling pads, but certainly there is no lack of options. They get more complex as you go up in price and allow you to control the fans, they may have LEDs, they can report exhaust temperatures or provide you with extra USB connectors. Also, obvious really, but this requires an extra investment and it may not be that cheap or you may not want to invest extra compared to the initial investment of the laptop. Number 3. Undervolting the CPU I would still classify this as easy, especially considering that I'm going to show you how to do it. This step is easy if you have Haswell or Skylake based CPUs, you need Intel Extreme Tuning Utility or XTU, Google it, download it, install it, start it and go here. This is where you can adjust the voltage that goes into the CPU. Start by dropping it minus 10 millivolts, click apply and then use its built-in benchmarking to see if the CPU is stable or not. Do this until it crashes, keep track of your voltage and from that minimum voltage start going up in plus 3 millivolt increments until it no longer crashes. Bench it at this new value for 30 minutes at least and make sure it is stable. There are diminishing returns with this, you may be lucky and have a CPU that can be stable at very low voltages and using this very low voltage puts in turn more stress on the board VRMs or IVR for Haswell chips by requiring very large amounts of current. Temps start building up and you are back where you started so don't be baffled if this happens. Number 2. Repasting with better tim. Manufacturers either skimp out on quality tim or they opt intentionally to use lower quality but with higher durability. This does not help your cause at all. This may void your warranty for most laptops but returns are high if you use quality paste. I cannot guide you step by step, you need to google your laptop model, chances are somebody already did it and has a guide on it. It is not difficult and risks are rather low. Just clean the old stuff and apply the new paste using your preferred method. I use the P for GPU and line method for CPU dies. And finally number 1, still repaste but use a gallium based type TIM like Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra or Pro. This is extremely effective and has much better thermal conductivity to even top end TIMs. Disadvantages are that it is electrically conductive and if you get it on the motherboard components or on the surface mounted components on the CPU and GPU, you will most likely fry them. One tip I can give you is properly insulate areas like you see here. Use clear nail varnish in 2 or 3 coats on the surface mounted components to protect them from leaks drops it is safe it is easy there are risks with this method but the key is preparation good preparation reduces the risk to the same as repasting with regular tim this voids your warranty so be warned so that was it guys those were the five steps which i have done on my own laptop and have received great temperatures as a result I have one more step which I have intentionally omitted from the top five it's called heat sink lapping and here it goes as a bonus step so here's the bonus step, the most complex one. Chances are if you know what I'm talking about here, you don't need a step by step anyway. So I won't go into detail. But lapping means grinding the copper surface of the heatsink to make it level and get better contact with the dyes and therefore improving thermal conductivity. In combination with the above 5 steps, I was able to reduce my temperatures on the CPU and GPU by an average of 25 degrees, which is just plain amazing. There's a bit of risk and work involved here for sure and this will definitely void your warranty. I really hope this video helps you out in lowering your CPUs and GPU temperatures and I want to see your questions in the comments below. I will do my best to answer everyone. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and see you next time everybody. Bye bye!